Most people don't realize this, but DSA is often a four-level journey where very few people are able to cross the level two. Vivek, what are these levels? Well, it's difficult to completely put them in proper definitions, but then level one is roughly getting programming language mastery. Level two is being able to solve classical problems or what you would call sheet problems. Level three is about having some sort of framework in your mind where you can possibly think about certain kinds of problems and solve them in a structured way. You have forms in your mind which are common types in which problems of this topics actually come. And level four is being fairly competitive and knowing tactics or tricks that often come in contests. And I don't want to be vague about all these stuff. So let's discuss one particular topic in this whole four level stack so that you can understand what differentiates someone who is at level one, level two, level three, and level four. And just to take it as an example, I'll take the topic recursion because most people fear it because they are either at level one and level two. But once you reach level three and level four, it is a topic that becomes very, very easy for you. So let's understand how does recursion really looks like in the scope of the levels that we are talking about. And let's talk about level one first, right? This is level one. At level one, you essentially know the programming concept related to recursion, which means you understand that a function calling itself inside its body, something like X minus one or anything else inside it is technically a recursion. You understand how to use recursions to maybe find factorials using recurrence relations like F of X as F of X minus one into x or maybe Fibonacci like Fibonacci of x is equal to Fibonacci of x minus 1 plus F Fibonacci of x minus 2. You understand these relations can be coded in recursions and with any language you can implement them. You might have solved certain exercise problems like print 1, 2, 3, 4 up till n using recursion or maybe print 1, 2, 3 up till n then n minus one, so on up till two, one. Some patterns like this using recursion. And that gets you the idea on how to maybe use a functional relation in coding aspect and how to write recursive codes. This is basically your level one. As you move to level two, what changes is you start solving classical problems, which means these are problems that most people would know about and probably has a solution idea in their mind. For an example, most of you would have heard about problems like Tower of Hanoi. It's a very, very common problem where you move disks across different pegs and you need to be able to solve a particular problem or a state. You might have heard about terms like backtracking now when you start solving some classical problems around here because then you realize oh recursion can be used to solve a lot of brute force problem. Backtracking is nothing but a strategy to implement brute force using recursion. So you learn that oh we can solve a lot of brute force problems and you solve certain problems like n queen or word search, rat in maze, all these classic problem right. You have looked at these questions, you have tried to see the recursive codes and you have memorized them to some degree and uh, if one of these questions come in your test probably you'll be able to answer them but in most cases this is where people reach this is the average candidate in today's time and if they get one of the problems that they have seen in recursion or backtracking till this point they will be able to solve it if even 10 20 percent is changed and a new problem is given very few people are able to solve it right and i'll give you some examples of how things look in the next levels and you'll be able to realize what i'm talking about right if i just give you some constraints that oh instead of queen you maybe have some sort of knight properties in the queen or instead of queens you have to place knights on the board how many different ways can you place k number of knights k knights on n cross n board chess board how many ways can you place k knights on n cross n chess boards would you be able to modify these kind of problems that you have learned to solve the new variations this is what limitations of level 2 looks like and once you go beyond level 2 is when you are able to truly solve new problems thrown at it a typical scenario of people at level two is you are able to solve a problem that you have seen before but you are not able to solve problems that are new to you okay in level three you essentially learn frameworks and forms for an example i teach this framework of using lccmd to solve a lot of backtracking recursion problems for example this is nothing but level choice check move decide right this is something that can help you design solutions from scratch and write their code without even understanding much about different things for an example if you have the standard n queen problem right Right? let's say you have a four cross four board and you are trying to design a solution what you think about in this is okay you have queens in each row so I can place my first queen in this then this then this then this and this is an iterative process by which I can maybe get a solution right so you are going row by row in this case you can define level as your row choice as your which column number will you put column for queen then check is 
when you are suppose in row 2 in this level and you are placing queen here, does it get attacked by any of the previous queens or not? This is what you call as check, previous queens, m is move. If none of the previous queens attack this particular place, then it's a valid move. So you can place a queen here and then go to the next level. This is called move. Basically you place on whatever data structure you are maintaining, you recurse to the next level. And then when you come back from the recursion of the next level, when you complete enumerating everything in the next level, you come back and you revert, you remove this queen so that when you loop to the next choice, you can place queen and again maybe go into recursion, something like that. So this is the simple framework and once you place everything, if you want, you can add the end D, decide whether whatever you have generated is correct or not. So in this case, since we are only placing queens at valid places, you don't really need to decide, but this would be how you would apply this framework. And once you have this, you can actually go ahead and solve a lot of problems directly with this framework. For an example, it makes your coding as easy as well. So once you put any problem in this LCCM framework, you can go ahead and start writing code for it, void recursion, which row you are trying to place right now, right? So this will basically go here. In this, you will write the base case. Once you are done with all the rows, so if it's an n cross n queen, if row equal to equal to n, you basically have generated one particular solution. Here, you will try to maintain the board in some way. Let's say a data structure will maintain how your board looks like right now. This will be the base case. You can print the board to print a solution because if you placed n queens and you have reached the nth row, 0, 1, 2, 3, up till n minus 1 you have placed, nth row you are reaching, that means you can print the board and that's a valid solution. This is nothing but your base case. Now, once you do this, you can go to the next part, which is enumeration of choices. And what you can do is you can write for integer column here, the column where you are placing the queen is your choice. So for column equal to zero, column is less than n, column plus plus, right? This is basically going through all the choices in that level. Once you have, once you go through that, you check if you can place really the queen at this row, row and column. And this is something that will be supported by this board, right? So that if you quickly give it the row and column, it can check with the previous row queens that you have placed till now. Are they attacking this particular place? Then you cannot place it or you can place it, right? Something like this. So this board will implement this can place. Once you do this, you can simply go ahead and place the queen at row comma column. This is also the board a function of board probably. And then you can go to recursion of row plus one and you can come back and unplace the queen that you placed on the board at row comma column. This should be your whole code. This is enumerating on choice. This is check. This is move. Any problem can be modeled like this. For example, generate all permutations of one to n, right? If you think about this problem, there are n places. In each place, you can start generating the permutations by placing numbers in each position. So each place can be your level. So we can start designing the LCCM for this level will be the position at which index we are placing right now. Once you place here, you can go to the next position. Choice will be in the range one to n. Check will be, it should not have got placed before, right? Because if you are placing something here, it should not have been placed before or else you are repeating a particular number and it's not a permutation of one to n. So check it will be not placed before move basically you put the number at whatever position you were placing go to the next level come back and remove that's the standard thing and decide here also since if none of the positions are equal to anything before it it's always generated correctly so you don't need to check any once you write this the code of this looks very very simple same void the code will also be very very simple void recurrence int which position you are trying to fill there is a simple array let's say which is of n size right outside and you are trying to fill the position pause right base case if position equal to equal to n you are done with placing all the things so you will get a valid you can print arr somehow right this is the base case and you of course return from the base case then you can enumerate on the choices that for choice equal to one choice is less than equal to n choice plus plus and you have to check so if not placed choice so if you have not used this number then you can place at this choice basically it's nothing but arr of pause equal to ch recurrence of pause plus one and then you can just revert even if you don't revert in this case it's fine because the next choice will override this but still i can do arr of pause equal to minus one this is just the revert step 
and it's the same framework solving this problem as well. This is how you can write any problems code and most students often get confused that Vivek, how I'm able to write new problems code on my own. Unless you have a framework like this, this is what the power of framework is. This is what I teach almost in every topic on my channel or in AZ anywhere that how to think about new problems, how to have the right mental model and how to be able to write codes on that particular topic. Now there can be a bunch of optimizations that this not placed can be maintained by another array that which of the numbers from one to n has been used and you can like this check from o of n can be converted to o of one all these prunings and choice management can be learned as you solve good and hard problems but again at least as the basic this is what level three looks like vivek if this is level three what does level four looks like let's understand that level four now in level four basically it's more of practice of level three like practice of level three i would say is essentially level floor plus you understand some more techniques and tactics for example what if i ask you find from one to n if i generate all permutations find the kth permutation in this series right Find the kth branch in the whole recursion process. If you are using recursion to generate everything, how to find the kth thing? Or find the kth tower of Hanoi move, right? All these kind of things. Kth generation is one idea. For example, fractal generation is one idea. How to find these kind of things? There are very, very specific techniques that you need to learn for these. And unless you know them, you will not be able to solve questions. I'll show on the screen. There are some questions that have come before in different places, which actually use these kind of questions, say on at coder or on code forces. You will get the links of these in the description as well, if you want to just try them. So this is what you have to slowly become good at. And of course, as you move to harder forms, like there are more things that you will learn in recursion once you move to dynamic programming. In fact, these are whatever I have taught in the first few lectures of DP workshop on my YouTube channel. Make sure that you watch that whole playlist if you want to become very good at recursion and dynamic programming. But this is what level three, level four looks like. Just to give an example, this is something that can be solved by using like simple maths as well. Having the idea that if you start permutations with one, there are n minus one factorial numbers, two, then there are n minus one factorial permutations and so on. So based on this, if k is given, if let's say n is equal to three, in that case, this is nothing but two, this is nothing but two. So the third permutation will not start with one because one has two permutations. So the third one will be in two. So from that, you can get the second move and you can find the first permutation after starting with two. So this is an idea that you will have to learn. And there are many such ideas as you solve more problems. This is what the difference between level one, level two, level three looks like. Level one people are just gonna be able to solve standard coding questions, but not able to solve good hard like classical problems whose solutions are to be known when people are at level two they memorize the solutions of level two and this is what i have seen with people who are trying to memorize solutions from sheets and all but that doesn't get you to the places where when you solve problems that are not known and most of the companies OAs and interviews these days don't ask directly known problems or ask a variation of it when you move to level three we discussed that you actually learn about frameworks and you are able to think about problems on your own and you can devise solutions and write codes for them and level four is generally all about collecting tactics that can be used to solve hard problems in contest. This is what makes you competitive. So this is the four levels of DSA. In the comments below, let me know which level you think you are at right now and what's your plan to move to the next level, how you think you are gonna be. Generally, this is a work that you'll have to put in to slowly move to at least level three so that you are hireable in today's scenario in general cases, right? If you want more such breakdown videos, let me know in the comments which topic you wanna know the different levels in. I hope this new style of making video is something you would love where we talk about things on camera as well as on the drawing part. Give it a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep knowing more such good contents and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.